All right, hey guys, Fitz back here for another game here, and uh, game two of series number three of this epic uh, of this epic semifinal series between Sass and Refs. And spawn here in the bottom left for Sass, it will be Pez, who. That game was a little confusing for me, to be completely honest. I think I need to be a little bit more aware of what the Terran is doing, but ultimately it came down, it boiled down to one engagement, and Terran just was not ready. There was no spider mines. It was very one-sided, down to Tama, and Tama played a very, very excellent game here. Um, and his opponent, actually, we talked about Tama. It will be uh, Reps Russian Fund Pro Gaming Teams Division A teams uh, Tama here, because Reps has a uh, Division A and Division B or B team and A team, but, but probably the best way to describe them. And, uh, you know, the more I'm thinking about this, maybe I'm wrong about loser picks, but I still think loser picks maps here. It's just because, like, the second game's always gone on to Fighting Spirit. Uh, so I, I could be completely wrong, but I believe loser picks map, but again, Fighting Spirit's an absolutely fantastic map to play on. Um, very, very diverse play. You can really do a lot on this map. It, it's kind of, it, it tends to boil down to a lot of standard play. Um, as it's the most reliable, as it's the most consistent, as it's probably the most skill-based. Um, if you're just not... ...on this map as you can, as why it's the most popular map in Brood War. Um, but anyway, we will have, uh, Tama going for the wrong scouting location, and unless Tama's gonna go uh, to the top right and then cross, uh, it's gonna be the last scouting uh, information. And um, very, very standard stuff here, barracks going down, and then refinery. I believe that's a quicker refinery that you're normally used to seeing, but uh, we shall verify that for sure. Uh, gateway warping in now, and gas starting to come in. So things are looking very standard for Tama as well. So of course, gonna be coming up right about two minutes and 15 seconds-ish to 10. Um, around the timing, but uh, probably should run, finish around 2.45, and probably will follow this up with a, uh, yep, the timings of this would be actually literally perfect. Uh, that factory should be coming out like now. Uh, so yeah, he may go for an FD push again. Uh, now this will make it a little bit, the, he's actually not gonna opt to wall off here. Um, so Tamo will eventually be able to scout here, and it looks like actually Pez has actually scouted the wrong location too, so. Um, it was actually funny one time. I, I was I was playing a game and I, th this guy must have been smurfing or something. He was just really really, well, he could micro really really well. And what he ended up doing was I was just cannon rushing it, cannon rushing. And what happened was he put he had a scouting SCV. He uh, it was these spawns or no no it was cross spawns. Okay, and I was here in the bottom right and he was in here in the top left actually. But I scouted down here first and he had an SCV there already and he blocked it he, he made it like blocking off that he's trying to like block off any kind of you know scouting and he did it really really well and then i finally i finally get through and then I, after like 35 seconds of just like intense microing that probe around I, it turns out that he's not even there and then he's like proxy like three three racks and i lose it was it's really funny um I guess he was just really, really good. It probably was luck too that he just happened to have an SCV right where I was about to scout too. I don't, very probably just bum luck, but uh, anyway, getting back into this game here, it looks like another uh, FD push or just a one fact, one a fact, F, uh, fact FE. Uh, he may do an FD push. He may not. Uh, he does have around four to five Marines, which would be the identification identification of an FD push. He's getting spider mines as well, so it's definitely shaving up to be a push. But again, it. it this could just safely just go into into an expansion as well, because it's safe to do either or. It just makes it look like a two factory coming. But the only thing though is like a two factory. Oftentimes, I feel like the, like the two, the FD push it kind of lost its FD fake double ishness because what it, what it ends up actually end up being is that you get so many more Marines than you normally get in FD push of what I've seen of of it, of, of sorry of a two factory push that you could I I mean. When I see this, it's just like, oh, it's an FD push. I mean, because the sheer amount of Marines that are in the mix here versus, like, actual mech. But I guess I could be wrong. Maybe I just saw players doing a, a, a two-factory a, a, a different way or something like that. Because I, I believe you could actually only afford to actually produce out of two factories like that anyway. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Problem, though, is, like, an FD push actually really doesn't do too much because ends are just getting hard countered by, like, aggressive Dragoons. Um, you know, out in the map here, because you can actually just 
like to say actually what he's doing right now is he actually got a target fire the tank uh, he's taking some decent damage right now but since range should be done now uh, yeah he got, already got range done so um, he can actually just out micro this and look at the times that the actual engagement happened there's a spider mine out in the middle of nowhere which this may hit uh, of course but you know now there was five marines and now there's two and now um, it's like a vulture and now there's no tank now, of course I, I don't think I don't think there's really any risk of actually losing this expansion it's safe but that push just gets really uh, at this high level of play where where a player will actually be aggressive they'll actually put their dragoons rally them out here as there's no risk of any kind of drop play you actually see it coming but I know we do have two gates that we do have the robo coming up with obs already out uh, very very standard stuff Back at Terran HQ, we do have transferring SCVs down to the natural expansion here. Uh, now, looking at the numbers here for both players here, let me just get, look at this. Tama is up in the. Uh, let's just put. Tama's on the left and Pez is on the right. 23 to 25 harvesters, so fairly, fairly even in general. It looks like we're going to be. Uh, sorry, Tama's going to be gearing up for a third base here. Very, very standard. Now. Terran may t take a third base here shortly as well. Uh, they like to three base on this map, but that's not to say that they won't. It doesn't mean that they won't see a two base timing and then go into a third and fourth base. But uh, generally speaking, standard Terran play in Terran versus Protoss on this map tends to equal a, third, a quick third base and uh, walling this area off and then doing a 200 200 with 10. With, with a, the best way to do it is 200 200 with upgrades, but uh, it's not guaranteed. Um, kind of like it kind of like mex it kind of like goes down to like a final engagement where players like to do that i mean it's you know it, you know Terran can you know turtle very well off these three bases and they don't really have to because what they all they have to really worry about is two bases instead of three bases being potentially dropped because what ends up being is because both these bases are literally near at the edge of the map here they could just put a couple turrets here if they'd like to turrets here and turrets here they're pretty much foolproof because then they can just put tanks everywhere so what they could do, but all right. So we have two, three tanks and two vultures, uh, compared to nine dragoons and three obs already. So again, both players are just really, you know, teching at this point. This is kind of the point in the game where both players are, well, teching. So um, we're getting up to uh, gateways three and four now. Uh, we do have the barracks lifting this way over to the natural expansion, just checking what the heck's going on over there. As he probably doesn't want to burn off scans, um, as he doesn't even have scans. An, an academy should be coming down soon. So now you have like eight minutes and 30 seconds, is like timing wise. I could be completely wrong though. Um, but theoretically, that should be the timing. Um, third base is operational, and this should allow protests to be in uh, high, higher harvesters, but um, actually is not. Uh, 33 to 34, so it's actually dead even, which is surprising, um, because Terran actually only offered two uh, command centers, which means pay, uh, it means that Tam is cutting pro production, which means we may be seeing a timing push. Uh, but we actually see a deviation from the attack. We do see a reaver drop here like we saw last game. So And that's why because it's in the top left hand corner where where I wouldn't even see it. So if I, I'd highly doubt that uh, Pez could actually see this as well and see scanned uh, ooh, Well, he's gonna be pushing out here with a two base timing here Which is probably the reason why a third except I was gonna say that a th a, that third command center should be coming down shortly But uh, all right, so he has a good amount of stuff here um, Four five tanks excuse me so he's gonna be doing this push here now. Will it work? I mean, the map is open, which does allow you know maneuverability for 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 Protoss. But he does have he will be able to drag either a the Spider-Man or he's just gonna zealot bomb over here. But um, it looks like he's not even gonna bother. I don't know why two Marines actually fending this off. Um, but if he drops anywhere near those tanks, though, it actually may prove to be really catastrophic for Terran, actually, because if he can drag the tanks up there, um, and so he's, well, he's, he's just doing his best of his ability right here. He still has a Reaver in there, thankfully, though. Uh, he will not sacrifice that just to Reaver drop, Reaver bomb. That's probably way too expensive. It's 200, 100, so um, it's nearly... Ah, uh, well, Ops is... Here. It's actually a very weird, odd position 
where both players well Terran's in a very peculiar position here because they de like this is not where you really want to set up a contain because if if Protoss wants to, they could actually just force a base trade right now, which would be actually really effective because think about it this way. Tanks are gonna he may not know that this Protoss army is actually gone real quick, so he could actually just outmaneuver as there is like there's a spider mine here. He could just maneuver all, all the way around and then just counter push. As there really isn't that much here, there's three tanks, but without any kind of proper buffering, it's actually could be proving uh, very, um, t uh, t Tama's counter push could be very powerful. But he's just slowly pushing with uh, with turrets, Spider Man tanks, being really, really a uh, douchebag. But at this point, it's looking more all in from Pez as he's no, he doesn't follow this up with the command center. Um, really, really much of anything here. So this is all in at this point, in my opinion. Uh, he has no upgrades. He really hasn't shown any identification of, you know, switching out of this, um, out of this, um, five factory play. I know that's like a certain timing, but, um, he's doing two factory timing here. Um, I mean, he's committing to it. And the thing though, is he's actually pushed back. Like, this push is actually working. Um, there's actually nothing really stopping this, though. So I'm surprised still no expansion timing, though. And again, you'd see a command center over here if he's going to put it down. But again, we just don't see that. Uh, all right, but here we go. He, he's going to try to break through this, though. There are a lot of spider mines here. I did clear up a good amount of the Dragoons here, but he does have a very, very nice spread here, though. Um, I mean, he's got a very nice arc here. Tanks are spread out, though, but w I think there just might be too much Protoss. Um... Yeah, there is, again, there isn't like that much to buffer anymore. There are spider mines here, but they're too, too close to the tanks. They're kind of positioned for, well, well, actually, well, with more, with more Zells coming in here, they can drag the spider mines to the tanks. Um, so yeah, this push to get cleaned up here, which, uh, actually, this is actually, it's kind of like a two-edged beetleist thing where you, there's, like, nothing left after, after that aggressive play. Um, because actually, when you look back at the, the home base here, there's a tank. I mean, even if we look back at the army tabs here, there's one thing and two vultures. Uh, it appears that um, Tama's gonna win this game. Uh, there's really no follow-up from Pez here. Again, I, I'd like I'd like to see you know more of an expansion coming behind this. But if he's gonna do a two base all in, this is how you do it. Um, but again, it, 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 it's like it's it's like the same thing of like going a, a three base timing. Oh well, he's just put down expansion. Okay, he's gotta try to macro out of this. All right. Um, but like I was saying, though, it's gonna be hard to you know, transition out of this, or try to claw your way back into this, because there really is no transition out of this. Uh, you know, you need to get your upgrades going, uh, but the problem though is that that's, you need to invest in two armories, and then you still have to invest in all your mech. But it doesn't look like uh, Tama's really gonna wanna uh, counter push right now. It looks like he may just wanna take a fourth base. Uh, you know, just going into more of a macro style, that's totally fine. Um, I think he probably could just take the game right now, but uh, I think he might just be a little worried that there might have been a third base there. I'm not quite sure if T uh, I'm not quite sure if Tama actually knows of a third base here. Um, he has checked for this in the past. I just don't think any recently he's scouted that. So I'm not quite sure if he thought maybe a third base down here that he just hasn't scouted yet, or something that maybe he just thinks that he's just not in such an advantageous position as the RD is in. Is that can happen in StarCraft? Alright, but anyway, let's let's look at this. We're up to four gates, six gates, eight gates, ten gates now coming up. Um, but uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! We have a vulture run by here. This is gonna be pretty big right here. So let's watch these probe counts uh, dwindle, if it can happen. So he's up to 48 probes um, at the beginning of this, though. So keep in mind, if a spider mine goes does go off, though, uh, it would be actually really, really bad. But it doesn't appear that they w did go off. He's gotten three, four, of which now. So. Again, if you go back to the Alpha Terran when he co-casted, I haven't seen that guy in a long time. Um, we do have a fourth base coming up for uh, Tema right now as well, as a, as the third base has finished for Pez right here. But like he was saying though, as long as like one Vulture kills off a probe and is not rebuilt in like 15 or 30 seconds, which it appears it is not, or there it is. Um, it is cost effective, the Vulture, but. It's only 75 anyway, so they're cheap disposable units anyway. But um, going back to this though, like I was saying, that two base timing though, in my opinion, it's just, it's just hard for Terran to actually, you know, 
transition out of it if there was a counter push from Protoss because what do you have left? Um, I mean, you've committed so much into that and it's like it's like a three base kind of Terran where you've, you've committed so much to a 200, 200 mech army that's so powerful. Um, to really to break that it's really impossible it, it, it's not possible as this matchup would be broken if it wasn't but it's working it, he's actually yeah i think he's just got a fall to this fourth base he may just cancel it um as well and this is the other thing though like this third base though tam is really a really good spawn location as well to, to help out with this matchup too because now because uh pez didn't want to expand here uh where his where his natural third base would be um, not, not to say it's like three base turtle Terran is impossible on this map, but you know, oftentimes it doesn't even like Terran just disregard this anyway, just because like oh the third base is right there, um, as it's so easily to defend here. But it doesn't look like he's broken the shields on this, but it looks like he's just retreated. But there are spider mines in position if uh, Dragoon was up there. But we do have a 165 army, uh, 165 supply to 195, so. A very high supply count there, but uh, this might be just all she wrote here for Terran right here. I feel like this is the last thing you can do right here. Um, the engagement will tell all, but it just looks like there's so much Protoss and so much Tama on screen, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like, yeah, this army is just going to get pushed off. Um, and again, again, it just kind of goes back to the, the two base timing right there. Generally speaking, um, it's hard to transition out of it because like a 200 200 mech army off a of three base it's like kind of the same scenario here if that army gets killed off it's not like you have the economy to remax off a two, like a two like off of like that many fact like you only have so many factories and it doesn't remax like a protoss can like a protoss in this matchup takes in consideration like how do i kill off this three base terran and th and that oftentimes is taken in the fact like that you have at least one more base in the terran uh, uh, and like if not more you always want more bases like probably like two or three more and then you can just get like up to like 20 gates and then you can just remax instantaneously Terran doesn't have that ability they just don't have they need to be off like six six you know bases and at that time they have so many scvs to saturate that it they're remaxing of an army that would be initially off a of three base anyway so it's not optimized as much but not to say a six base Terran is a bad thing uh but it's just not the same as this three base style, and you could just kind of derive that from the two base style. It's it's kind of the same thing, just like a timing window. But the problem though is, I guess like a three base, I guess it's kind of worked out as a three base protoss can just beat that anyway by the timing of it. And the other thing though is like, the, wh what I really like from Tama that game was that Tama, you know, positioned themselves in such a way that he, he had had the arc of their units in like, such a way that they weren't being shelled at, but enough that the Terran couldn't advance a bulk of their force. They had to slowly, you know, break in and push back. Maybe a siege tank hit, and then they, he would slowly push that back. He or she, Tama, I don't know if it's he or she, but I'm guessing it's a boy, and he slowly pushed that back. And what that did is it allowed for, for time to be bought that pretty much that made that mech army just not as powerful you know you know from that er early engagement timing that maybe there was enough gateway units maybe there was just too much tanks there maybe there was too much buffering from the spider mines and vultures for that to be gone but I mean, that that exponentially gets smaller as that three base is going in because that means you have a whole extra base than your opponent and that while it's just continuing to, to, to two base you it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're being if your opponent thinks you're off off the same bases, but you have like hidden expansion, and you just come out with more units as long as you continue to defend well. Like it's kind of like that. It's like being too aggressive. It's kind of like where that derived from as well. If that makes sense. Um, as I'm just trying to explain this in the best way as I possibly can to you guys. Uh, but that's pretty much what that. That's pretty much all I can really analyze on this game here. So that pretty much means now that wow, we have actually taken every game. Well, 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 I actually don't know actually how this actually ends. Um, this might just be a, a strict up 5-0 for reps, but um, that does mean I will wait to declare this. But right now, that does declare that reps does get into the finals, um, of the of Clan League. But uh, let me just actually update this. Um, let me update this real quick. So congratulations to reps, but we'll just. Because you have to remember, Clan League doesn't go off of, it's it's about points, and they still kind of, it's kind of silly that they still make this, they make it still like in the semifinals and finals like this, but I guess it just gives you an opportunity for the whole team to play. Uh, oopsie, that's the wrong overlay. Um, but what I mean by this is that 
in my opinion, Clan League works out in such a way that it's kind of it's it's good for the season, meaning that like it's not but based on how many wins you have. It's it's kind of like that, but what it pretty much is, if you guys don't know, if you guys are just tuning in the finals of this clan or semifinals rather, Clan League is based off of, um, you know, in the regular season and the finals and the semifinals. There, there are five matchups. Um, I've been casted two v two. I've been given two v two reps, and nor for the semifinals for this as well. Hopefully, for the finals, we get the two v two. But going, getting, getting past this anyway. What I, what I want to talk about this is that you have five, you have five. I, I call it a match for like the team. Okay, the team is the ma- like is like the the matchup is SAS versus reps like we have here. The series is between X player versus X player. And each series is worth one point. Okay, so there's five there's five points to be there's five points to be awarded. So even if you even if you lose like four one, you still get a point to your team overall, and whoever has the higher score gets the playoffs, etc. Blah 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 blah. Okay, um, and then the and then whoever I, it, and it it's still scaled to the winner because if if it's three two for example, actually the winning team gets four, and the losing team has two points because as you like you saying, there's only there could only be five points awarded, but the winning team gets one more point just to give them an extra point for actually winning the set. Here, it's, like, a little different because it's, like, well, I don't know how the finals works. I'm not sure if, like, they do it live and, like, all the players, like, expect it because I don't, I don't see all these spectators in the game. But I, I have to imagine they just kind of play it through in a week of the finals. But in that regard, like, it just seems kind of silly because, like, if I go what I'm casting this, like I don't know the order of these games are played in, and it doesn't even matter because like the first three series are, are actually are already two reps as it stands anyway. So is it even worthwhile? Again, I like that the other two players are working, are, are actually playing, and I don't even know how they work because those are two separate things. It doesn't it doesn't mean like oh it's three two or it was like five oh you don't know we don't know, so it it's still it's still non spoiler alert but. At this point, you could just put one and one together, so I'm just going to point it out there right now. But still, it's... I think it needs to be improved. I think that this... It just doesn't work for the finals, because it's like, well, if you cast it in such a way, in a tournament situation, it's like... It's like a best... It's like a best of seven, or like a best of three scenario. Like, even though someone won two games, but you're still playing that third game anyway, so, like, there's no point to. So, like, these two players don't even need to bother playing in that regard, but they don't know that. We just know that. Um, But they're still playing out their, their hard content. I think I've talked about this a little bit too much, guys. I, I apologize. Got a little bit of a tangent right there. But anyway, great game by both players. So we'll just go on to the next series, guys. Um, That'll be our last series of the finals. Um, Or semifinals, series, not the finals. Finals should be tomorrow. Or tonight. I don't know. I, I'm getting a little tired. I think I'm gonna organize the vods and then just upload them tonight and then go to bed and then I'll go to the finals. But that's that's for another vod. Uh, <laughs> talking about that because we're I think we're already over like 20 minutes in our assistance. Guys, again, thanks for watching. We're going to the next uh, series. Uh, and peace, guys.